Let me tell you a love story. In 1884, Rosa Casorso received a note in the mail uh, and a ticket from her husband Giovanni, who'd been gone for three years. Uh, she was to travel from Italy to San Francisco with their three little children. She arrived in San Francisco six weeks later, not speaking a word of English, uh, trying to communicate to the dock hands, you know, where am I supposed to go? The slip of paper, all it said was, you know, Father Pandozzi, Okanagan Mission. Somehow, the bell that was supposed to be hanging in the church at the mission had arrived at the same time. So the dock hand said to her, follow that bell. And from there, she went on to be one of the first shareholders in Kelowna Wines, which was BC's first commercial winery. Rosa Casorso is my great-great-grandmother. This packing house is very dear to my heart. This packing house was built by my great-grandfather in the 1920s. It was built as the packing house that would take care of all of the orchardists in this area. Uh, we converted the old packing house into a winery in 2007, and uh, it has a lot of soul. Inside, we've even used bricks that my great-grandfather made himself from the clay from a local mountain, Knox Mountain. Bees aren't necessarily uh, required for pollination here in the vineyard. However, all of our neighbours with small farms and orchards in this area certainly do rely on bee pollination. We get the benefit of the lovely honey and so do our customers in our wine shop. But I think it's important to point out that uh, we've been here for nearly 90 years. This vineyard has, uh, was first planted in 1927 and uh, we want to preserve it for years to come. We want to continue to be a part of this old farming community. This is, after all, the, uh, the beginning where the uh, wine industry began in British Columbia, and we're very proud of that. Well, this all started here in uh, 1928 in, in earnest. Uh, when J.W. Hughes uh, started to uh, plant uh, wine grapes here. Uh, he uh, did uh, start at uh, what is now known as Tantalus and Quailsgate, and he also planted these grapes here. So uh, he was uh, obviously a, a man which had quite a bit of drive. In the 60s, we were living in Alberta hairdressing and uh, my father talked us into growing grapes. And so in 1972, we took out the orchards and we put in the first grapes. And uh, we hairdressed in Kelowna still as we were trying to make the farm grow. And uh, then finally we had to make enough money so we could farm and not hairdress at the same time. Kelowna wines, we don't forget, we were making the big jug wines. We call it, used to call it street wine, right? People drink, people would buy it and drink it out of a paper bag on the railroad tracks or something. Those are the old days. Don't forget it's the 30s, right? We went through, right through the throes of the Great Depression. People were poor. The fact we started making wine in 32 and then trying to keep, stay alive, survive, it's quite an epic story right from there. We'd be lucky to have one of our wines in the restaurant, on the wine list, right? Of course, now there are restaurants that are now have totally 100% British Columbia wines. Wines from Kelowna, right here in their, on their Rod's restaurant, right there. Evelyn, you know, they, they love our wines. And every time I see a wine of ours that's on a wine list in Kelowna or any other restaurant, I would say thank you very much, because I know what it was like before. Foodies come in to your restaurant and get so excited about the food. Um, I think that there's definitely a large increase in a foodie scene and that demand in, in Kelowna. Part of the reason why I'm so connected with Kelowna is that my family has really deep roots here. My great-grandfather was actually the founder of the Kelowna Capital newspaper. I was on Top Chef Canada the uh, final season and became a finalist, which was a really unbelievable experience. A lot of people ask me, oh, you live in Kelowna, don't you want to go move to the big city and work at a kitchen there? And I don't. I love it here. I get to have amazing relationships with the farmers. I know where my product comes from. I love the community and I get to work with a really great group of amazing chefs. There are five wine trails in Kelowna. We belong to the Kelowna Fab Five, and honestly, it's a wine trail of renegades. It's got some real characters. Uh, so we have ourselves. We've been on the property for almost a century. We've been here for five generations. Uh, historically grew apples. And we've transitioned into growing grapes, and then I started the View Winery in 2007. We also have Vibrant Vine, very vibrant, as the name suggests. They actually have a 3D tasting room. Camelot's really neat. They have a medieval festival in August. It's really a lot of fun. Uh, in 1976, we planted the first Pinot Gris. We are the importers of Pinot Gris into Canada. 
so we consider ourselves home of Pinot Gris. It took me 40 years to brag about that. It's a great thing that biodynamic farming is becoming more well-known and more recognized. There's still a lot of different ideas about what it means. Um, it does have to do with relationships with the stars and moon, and it has to do with making preparations and cow horns and all those things. But the primary thing, the most important thing about biodynamic farming is farming in harmony with nature and developing that harmony and that connection. Well, in, in general, being in the wine industry, you have to be a little bit of character because any sane person would have a coffee shop or something like that. When Leo and I uh, came over here uh, from Switzerland over 30 years ago, I mean, it was an absolute gorgeous spot and it is sort of like Switzerland on steroids. It's just bigger and the skiing is, is a little bit more uh, powdery, but in the beginning, of course, lots of people warned us about it, what a bad idea this is, and there's never going to be any Canadian wine worth drinking. And uh, probably was the lack of English, or I just couldn't understand what they were saying. And, um, well, we made a go out of it. It was one of these things that uh, you turn from a fool to a visionary in, in a very short period of time. <laughs>